Hey guys, Weep here. Welcome back to another video by Variety MMOs. In today's video, we're going to be covering Stronghold in Lost Ark. So the Stronghold is basically a housing area like most generic MMOs. However, the housing or strongholds in Lost Ark is fully fleshed out unlike some of the housing situations in MMOs. So currently this account is a state is level 11. I have decided to level the estate on two different accounts so I can show you two different pers perspectives for this guide. So even at level 11 you have a lot of things unlocked like you have farming unlocked, you have a chef unlocked, you can craft, you can send away missions, you can level up characters via boosting, you can level up characters by passive XP. There's a lot of things that you can be doing in the estate and I think it's very important for you to understand them each in turn. So in today's video we're going to be looking at level 11 estate. Then we're going to jump over to the other account and look at the level 18 estate. I do want to be clear in saying that the estates aren't fully upgraded due to my ban, unfortunately, on Korea about a month and a half ago. Some of the estate items require like level 30 or above, so getting a state to that kind of level is kind of insanity. And you don't necessarily need to go that high in the estate levels. Okay, so let's get into it. So the first thing I want to talk about is your boat missions. So what you're going to do is you can cycle through your interfaces by clicking the B key. You're going to go to manage and you'll have these up here. So you'll notice that you have your general areas here. Your laboratory, estate work, shop, dispatch, pep branch, which is not on this one. As you can see, here's level 15. The mansion, the training school, and the knowledge. So we're going to go through each of these in turn. So first up, let's look at dispatch. So dispatch is like any other uh, boating uh, part of any other MMO that you've probably played where you have characters that have special effects that go for special missions. For example, if there's a hurricane on that mission, you want a character that has the hurricane specialization to get through it. It's pretty basic. You just go through here and look at what rewards you're looking for. As you can see, the rewards are here. These rewards that you might notice here might be wondering what they do. They're actually traded with an NPC, which is located right there. So if we go back into Dispatch, you'll see that you have some advanced missions, but you also have special missions, which will take your token. So for example, if I send away the Guardian Raid and I successfully do the Guardian Raid, it will actually take away my soul count for that day. It's like basically acting as if I'd done the Guardian Raid. So be careful when you send away special missions. So this account is relatively new when it comes to the housing or the stronghold. So you'll see that I don't actually have a lot of sailors. So here I have only, I think, three sailors on this particular account. So we got an automatic organization. And you can basically just flick through here to see your adaptability. This is what you do early on and just want a high adaptability one. So the higher adaptability will be the higher rewards that you're going to get back when completing the mission. So, actually, I already have one here, apparently. So we shorten the time, which we can't do. So we'll instant it. We can't do that either. That's unfortunate. So it appears I do have missions already set away. So you basically want to select one, hit mission start, and off you go. And it's going to cost some pirate coins. So while you do get good rewards from these, like the seal of victories and whatnot, you're going to be using those in the NPC that I mentioned earlier. However, probably the most important thing in my personal opinion is the Odyssey Estate EXP. So you might not notice it at first, but when setting away missions, you're going to get a lot of Odyssey Estate XP. So you're probably thinking, well, what is Estate XP? Estate XP is effectively the level of your stronghold. And you need to get to higher levels to be able to unlock certain things. So, for example, you'll see this is my research is available. Now, if I go to full study, this is everything available in the house. So, if I click on some stuff, you'll see that I just don't have the ability. So, like, I don't have this and click through. And some of them will say things like, you need a higher estate. Like, for example, here, you need a research lab level 3 for many things in the estate. However, you can't get it because you don't have a state level 15. So one of the ways of boosting your state quickly is by sending away as many boat missions as humanly possible. So try to keep on top of that. Okay, so now that we've looked at the dispatch, let's have a look at the laboratory. So the laboratory is basically where you're going to be upgrading things to 
unlock so you'll be unlocking the pet place you'll be unlocking higher farm you'll be unlocking more traders you'll see in here traders will give you better items and stuff like that you have recipes for the chef honestly there is a lot of stuff that you'll be upgrading through here including uh here to get more xp or to reduce the costs or increase your chance of upgrading so getting these are quite nice and fortunately this is account wide so these will account this will go to all of your characters on that singular server so it is quite nice i'm being bad here because i don't have things researched but oh well so it is key to note here that there's a couple of important things you want to keep in mind one is that you have a state energy so a state energy is how much like think of it as like activity points how many activity points can you do in a day before you run dry and you can't do anything so everything you do so like you know when you set a mission when you research something you'll see that it used my state xp every time basically you do anything in the house it's going to affect your energy it's going to make it go down you're also going to note that it's actually costing gold which is a very precious resource so you're going to really want to be make sure that you're up you're unlocking things that you want to unlock otherwise you're just wasting gold okay so now that we've looked at the laboratory let's have a look at the estate workshop so the estate workshop think of it as like a crafting area where you can take different items that you've gathered either through gathering through the world gathering through your house which i will talk about a little bit later on and brought from other players so you'll basically bring these items in and craft items so it is key to note here that items will generally cost you gold and it'll also cost you house energy so just be aware when you're doing this However, on the plus side, you do get Territory XP, which is pretty nice. You can kind of boost your estate up by going to, I believe it's Installation, for example, and you just get Wood, and you just do this. So you'll see that you're getting a lot of XP for doing this. But after doing it myself and realizing that the only real things that unlock at level 15 would be the Pet Ranch, I'm not so sure it's worth rushing this because it took a lot of gold to do which i found that was needed on other things so if you see these things and you think oh extra xp mm, i'd probably suggest that you stay away from it and just focus on the dispatch instead uh, as you can see there is many different things in the crafting like for example you can craft better tools for gathering you have a bunch of stuff in here from the far produce from inside the house you have a bunch of installations which you can put in your house to get special effects you have food which is not showing for some reason oh it's because i haven't unlocked on this account you'll see that you have a bunch of different foods which will give you effects in like raids and whatnot so it's pretty cool to have these and you won't necessarily want to rely on buying these on an na market okay so basically you have three different production lines you just click it hit make and it'll make it be aware that sometimes you can get like a critical success and you'll get like extra items so that's really cool as well okay so let's jump out of it Okay, so we have looked at laboratory, estate, and dispatch. Let's go and have a look at the mansion. So the mansion is somewhere where you can put uh, items which will give you different effects. You'll see on this house, as I mentioned earlier, it's pretty new. So it has only research activity consumption 1% decrease. And you have a bunch of slots here where you can put different things in. So it's pretty basic. Now, if you go into here, you can actually see what you can unlock, which is currently not unlocked in this account. So you have the empty vacant slot, the farm site, the beach, and the remote island. So if you actually click on the red thing, it'll tell you what you're missing to actually get there. What you can see here is level 4 lab, level 6. So getting to these is actually going to take quite a while. So just keep an eye on this to know where you're heading. But don't overly worry about it because it is going to take time, like weeks and weeks if not months to successfully get everything. Okay, so next up, let's go and have a look at the training school. So here we are at the training camp, which is a little bit up and to the left. The training school. So basically, you talk to this NPC, and what it does is it allows you to pick a character. So when you're level 52, you can unlock this. And what will happen is you'll go up to the NPC here and tell it... So any character that's level 50, it'll come here and get passive XP slowly towards your highest character. So for example... If your highest character is 54, any of your 50 characters can get passive XP between 50 and 54. But it cannot go, say, to 56, for example, because your highest is 54. 
I would show you the interface, but unfortunately it does show all my character names. And I don't fancy having my account banned because they're able to see my character name. So unfortunately I can't do that. But it's a pretty basic interface. You just basically go in there, click on the character, and click train. And that's all there is to it. And you come back X days later and get your passive XP. It's really that simple. Okay, so let's go back to manage. So next up, let's talk about knowledge. So knowledge transfer is pretty simple as well. Basically what's going to happen is you pick a character, pretty much any character, and you click on it and say, hey, I want to transfer the knowledge to this character. So for example, if you did this top one on a new character, that character would be boosted to level 50 and it will give you basic gear for level 50. So you immediately skip over like two days worth of questing. And all you need to do is pay for 600 gold. Again, I would click on it, but I'm pretty sure it shows my character name, so unfortunately I can't do that. So yeah, that's really basic. I've mentioned this in another video, just be really careful when doing this, because it does take a considerable amount of gold, and if you use too much gold, you're not going to have it to upgrade your characters. So I'd recommend having two to three alt characters before you start using this feature. Okay, so that has covered a lot of the main areas in the stronghold but i want to mention a couple of the little things so like you have a chest here which you can transfer items which is really cool when using in the warehouse because all of your sorry not the warehouse in the stronghold all of your alts can instantly teleport here so they can all get access to your stuff which is really cool you have the typical stuff like this is where you buy items and whatnot so let's go down here and talk about the traders so you generally have the traders, which will arrive here, I believe they come like every six to eight hours, and you can trade things to them. Like for more sailors, for example, I could use this, buy the sailor, and now I can use that sailor, and now I can send that sailor away in the dispatch. So over here is the three main people that I want to talk about. So the recipe exchanger, so this is where you trade the seals that you get to buy recipes, like cooking recipes and stuff like that. Over here, you have the exchange, which you can trade seals for items. Many of these are pretty useful. You can also trade some seals for other seals. And here is the gathering guy, which you can basically trade in higher tier resources for lower tier ones. So you're going to find regularly, for example, I don't have enough wood. So you just hit exchange, turn your green wood into white wood at a pretty decent rate. That way you can get the materials that you're looking for. Okay, so now that we've covered that, let's go and have a look at the chef. So the chef is someone that I haven't really used, which I do regret. Uh, I feel like I definitely should have put more time into it. But the chef, as you can imagine, is pretty straightforward crafting. You get your items from gathering and you come in and you gather, you create items. You have one of two choices. You can either create an item generally for yourself or you can for four people, as you can see here. The four people ones are called barbecues, and the basic ones are just called feasts. Now, if you go all the way down to the bottom, you'll see down here, maintained for two hours, it has 10 servings, and it gives you plus 600 attack power. So those could be helpful in raids and whatnot. And you can get the items in a couple of different ways, which I'm actually going to talk about now. So let's talk about the farm and the cave. So this is a pretty low level farm. The farm of my other character was much higher. But when you come down through this teleport, you have a personal farm of resources that you can farm. Now, before you get excited, there's some real limitations that you should be aware of here. One limitation is that you cannot trade these ingredients. You cannot sell them, and you cannot even combine them. So, for example, let's say you're crafting an item that requires five mushrooms. You cannot use three tradable mushrooms and two untradable mushrooms to make an item. It won't let you. They're just completely different items. So when it comes to gathering, you should think of your in-house items as untradable, uncombinable items, and your the ones in the field as tradable and items you can do whatever you want with. You can sell them when they're still uh, when they're still materials, or you can use them in, to make items and then sell the items. You can upgrade your farm to higher tier stuff, but unfortunately, I haven't done that yet in this house. So let's jump in the teleporter over here and jump away. I should probably mention that the XP that you get at the farm 
I believe is half. So unless the unless the bots have invaded or you have a really tough time gathering because you're running out of time each day, you're gonna want to do it in the in the field because it just gives you more XP and more gold, quite frankly, and more things to do with it. But if you just want to focus on a singular character, this can work as well. So in here is the cave, which is at the top right. In the cave, it unlocks the same time as the farm. It's basically the farm, but for hunting, relic, and fishing. So you'll have your little things hunting around. You'll have some relics you see on the map. And then you have the fishing hole in the middle. Unfortunately, this is kind of pointless because there's not that many relics in here. Not many hunting's in here. And not much fishing. Generally... I just wouldn't use this place at all unless you were desperate to use up your resources because you were just running out of time. Because the fact that you can't trade the items and the fact that the XP is less is just not very good. When you get higher XP, you get into higher levels which unlock abilities which make your gathering faster and more powerful to begin with. So sacrificing the XP and the resources that you would get is just not something that I can recommend. Okay, so to keep this video quick, I will not keep going into all the little things. Next up, let's go and have a look at the pet farm. So here we are at the pet ranch. So the pet ranch is located on the island next to the farm area. I believe right now I'm a level 2 pet ranch. So the things you can do here is the cookies match. So basically you have cookies which you can be given over for items to like get more pets upgrade pets and basically just all brown things for pets and outfits and stuff like that as you can see here the next guy is basically how the pet ranch works so it's pretty simple so you have the pasture and you have the cookie workshop so you put them in the pasture and once they're in there their motivation will recover they will so like think of it as like the stamina so once the stamina is full as you can see my stamina is full you go into the cookie workshop and place them in there so now that you're in here it's going to use your stamina points to get the cookies which you use in the merchant that we looked at a moment ago so when you're in here you're going to get proficiency xp and when your proficiency xp hits a cap then you can upgrade your pets and do all sorts of things with them. So basically, you're putting them in here to get stamina. Then over here to use the stamina, get the cookie and to get XP. And then once you get the XP, you can upgrade your pets. Your pets have little effects like, you know, giving you buffs and whatnot in battle. So they are nice to have. Also, you can get more pets. I don't have them on this account right now, but you can get more pets. As you can see, you place many of them in there and you can place four in here at a time. You can use a booster, of course, but I don't have any right now. I would recommend keeping your pet in here at all times because even though your pet's actually in here, you can still go up here and dispatch your pet up here. As you can see here, pet goes in there, so that's allowed. So I'll just hit that. I don't have the energy, so I can't send that away. But your pet can be in here, it can be sent away on a mission, and it can be following you around at the same time. So don't worry about sending away your pet thinking that it's going to disappear, because it doesn't actually do that. So it's pretty neat. So that covers the pet branch section of this guide. So I want to finish up today's guide by saying that I have not fully upgraded the estate, as I have stated earlier. However, this has unlocked the majority of the features. There is a couple other things you can do, like unlocking the beach and unlocking higher tier recipes or not as you get further into the game. But as you can see here, just off a of level 18 estate, which honestly took me a while. It took weeks to get there. It wasn't quick. Um, there's a lot of stuff that you can do here, and I haven't even unlocked this area of the map on this account yet. There's so much to do, and some people I understand want to skip the estate because all they want to do is rush uh, characters to the end of the game and just run the same dungeon numerous times a week to make gold. If that's what you want to do, be my guest. But as somebody who likes to enjoy the game and complete all aspects, I do highly recommend that you do your housing because I believe that it's good, it's variety, and I believe that on NA... So on Korea, you can use gold to buy everything. There's, you can get whatever. Bots will get the materials. It doesn't matter. But on NA, the bots hopefully will not be there immediately. And everybody's going to want their boost items. They're going to want their materials early. So 
most people, I'm assuming, won't sell it. So you won't be able to just buy things and get your own materials. So you're going to have to do this, in my opinion. So I really would do the Gathering and the Stronghold if you intend to play Lost Stark. Okay, so that covers everything for today's video. I do apologize for it taking a little bit on the longer end, but there was a lot of stuff to cover. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace.